Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Society, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today is a little different than I usually have on my videos. Uh, it's for beginners and it's for buying a watch. Now this is really, I guess you'd say part two of sort of a survival guide for uh, beginning watch collectors. And the first thing you need to do before you decide to buy a watch is you need to do the research. So I'm assuming that you've done a lot of research and you know the watch you want or you know the general kind of watch you want. And so now you're, you're going to buy one. And there are a lot of different places that you can start. Uh, first of all, you can start at what's called an AD. And an AD is an approved dealer that the watch company says that uh, this person will follow the rules that we have. Now, you find these with, um, oh, for example, Patek Philippe and uh, Rolex are the most uh, common examples of where you have a, an AD, an authorized dealer. And the... <clears throat> Sometimes the authorized dealer can be the best place to get the best watch and everything else. If you need a lot of support and you need a lot of service, uh, it may be the way to go. Um, I bought watches uh, from ADs and it's sort of interesting. They Sometimes an AD will have the best price and the best deal, but that I haven't found to be generally the case, just sometimes so. Uh, sometimes you can go to an AD and say, have a, there's a watch that you want and it's not really selling too well for them. Um, and so they'll give you a good price on it. And so that you, you can get it from an AD. Now, more and more, uh, for lots of reasons, the pandemic is one, the more and more, watch collectors are looking online uh, if they hadn't already there's a lot of watch collectors who go to an online site uh to buy things now the the downside of buying online is that you don't get to try on the watch uh, you don't get to to handle it and see if it looks right on your wrist and is it too big or too small or does it look the way you want it to look and uh, that's true. But the vast majority of watches I bought, and especially the best buys I've got, have been online. Never, ever touched them until they showed up uh, by FedEx or UPS at my doorstep and I signed for them. So it's what it taught me to do is part one, which is the research, and we'll talk about that in another video, is to look at the options you have. Now, the first thing that you want to do is that you want to get a good overview of what the watch you want is selling for. For example, some watches are not popular, uh, but you may like them. And what you can find is that what happens with that, the, a watch that's not popular, uh, they'll sit in a shop or they'll sit online or they'll sit somewhere and nobody's buying them and there was something about that watch that you really liked or it could be just out of your financial reach and here what you can find is that you can find watches that are have been deeply discounted now usually they're not with ad's but they can be sometime uh certain ad's will have one that they want to get rid of let's say that you have uh, an AD for brand A, and he takes a trade in on brand B, but he's not an AD for brand B. And most of the people that, that go to him or her are want the brand A. And so uh, he, he's he got this brand B, and it's a perfectly good watch, but it's just not sort of the thing that comes to him. This is true with cars or anything else that you buy. So uh, oftentimes there you can you can find a good buy. But the way to pay the very most, beside not doing your research, is to not shop around. Okay, so how do you shop around? Uh, where's a good place to start? Now, I'm going to start online. 
because it, there's a lot of the online places are linked up to what you might call a brick and mortar uh, shop somewhere. So the, the, the most common places that most people start is an international sort of <laughs> bazaar of watches called Chrono 24. And Chrono 24 is, is a, I think it's a German, uh, it's owned by the Germans, but uh, you find watches from all over the world. And which means you have a tremendous selection of watches. Here's uh, what I usually do if I'm looking for a watch, if I'm seriously considering a watch. I'll first go to Chrono 24, and one of the things that one of the little uh, boxes you can check is that if it's, it's called new or unworn. Now, if a watch is unworn uh, or new, it's it it could be brand new and they just shipped it in and for some reason they decided to drop the price on it or uh, whatever. If a watch has been sitting around in a shop, doesn't bother me a bit. Brand new, it hasn't been out getting knocked around. You know, people may try it on in the, in the store and stuff, but that's, you know, that's the way it is. So anyway, so I, I go to Chrono 24. Now, the next step is to find one for a good price. Now, sometimes when you find one for a good price, there'll be something wrong with it that it's been scratched up or something's wrong with it. And that's hard to know. Uh, if the person really takes good photographs and does a lot of stuff with it, um, you know, to make it look good, it's sort of hard to tell. It really is. And um, so you have to look for every little nook and cranny from a photograph. And if the photograph doesn't show you what you want, Tell them, um, you know, you can just email them or contact them and say, uh, you know, could you show me a picture of this or a picture of that? And if they refuse to do it, I wouldn't buy a watch from them. They say, no, I, I'm, you know, you, I already had pictures. Don't buy a watch from someone who refuses to take their, <laughs> their phone and take a little picture of something on a watch that you're interested in. I wouldn't buy one from somebody who who doesn't who's unwilling to do that. Okay, so uh, now the next thing you do, and again, this is not. <laughs> I don't know. Some people feel funny about it, but not me. And you got a Chrono Twenty Four, so you find one you want. Um, I would suggest that you get a watch in your own company. If you live in England and there's a watch you like, and it's in England, I'd get it. Now, England is going to, they, they used to be all part of this uh, 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 European uh, common market, and that is sort of breaking up. So things may be changing rapidly in England, sure. But we'll say you live in England, and uh, you're interested in a watch, and they've got one up in Scotland for sale, and you live down in... Uh, uh, Dart or Dartmouth, someplace like that, and so you it just makes life easier. Okay, it doesn't have to go through customs. It doesn't have to do a lot of things, and so if you just buy one from somewhere else, it's usually easiest in your own country. I bought watches from everywhere, uh, but going through customs coming into the United States is always something goes on. The custom duties for the U.S. are very low, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the kinds of things that, um, so anyway, so you, it, it's just usually a good idea to get a watch from the country you're in. You don't have to, but like I said, usually a good idea. Okay, so uh, you, you find a watch you like, you find it in wherever you are, you're in Germany or Spain or Timbuktu, doesn't matter. So you find this watch, and then you go to, uh, you look at the dealer, okay? And usually they'll say a certified dealer or somebody they trust, all right? And that's important, because, boy, I tell you, if you've ever gotten, if you haven't gotten a mail, uh, sort of one of these phony 
emails from a prince who's going to give you millions of dollars if you return, give, you know, help them out. It's the same thing. It's the same in watches. you got to be careful. Um, what they do on Chrono 24 is that when you order a watch through them, they you send money to them, they'll put it into an escrow account. And then once you get the, the watch, you take a look at it, make sure it's the one you ordered. And if it's okay, you tell them, okay, it's okay to send my payment in. Okay, so that's that's a, a nice type of protection. I like going directly to the store itself um, for a lot of reasons. But uh, let's say that uh, I'm looking at a watch and uh, it's from a store in Miami. Now, Miami happens to be one of the watch centers of the United States. And uh, so I look up the store and I ask around, uh, hey, does anybody ever buy anything from this guy and they're okay? Uh, if you can, usually your contacts with other watchers are probably people you're going to meet online with different watch groups. Um, so that's that can be helpful. Uh, it also can be confusing because uh, watch collectors often have very strong opinions, more opinions than knowledge, I'll put it that way. So that's why your own research is important before you do that. So you so you find a dealer and then you go to the dealer's website and you take a look at, at the website. And um, sometimes what you can do is go directly to them and say, look, I saw this uh, advertised. Uh, I'd like to offer you X for it. Let's say it's $5,000 and say, I'd like to offer you 4100 for it. All right. And, you know, they they can either, they can do one of a number of things. Uh, first of all, they can say, fine. This has happened to me a number of times. I've always been very surprised. I'll put in a low bid because it's worth, that's what it's worth to me. And I'll say, fine. <laughs> Some of my best watches I've gotten that way. Other times they'll say, uh, that's, that's a little too low. I just, less than I can accept, but I can give you this amount. And so you can negotiate. That's another way. Uh, finally, they might say, no, it's down. It's, this is as low as I go. Okay, so you have those and your options, of course. You can walk away and take a look at something else. You can negotiate. Or if you're lucky, they'll give you what you asked for. This is another thing. If you if you do have a really low offer, be prepared to buy it. All right. If you offer, let's say, forty one hundred for a five thousand uh, dollar offer on a watch, they say fine, done, take it. Don't don't. I mean, there's not much else you can do. Uh, you don't want to. You, you can't really negotiate lower. And if you walk away, you sort of you'll get a reputation as you know, someone that you don't, that nobody wants to deal with. So if you're going to put in a low bid, be ready to, to get it. Um, if you get the watch and it's not at all what's advertised and that's a, then you can always send it back. All right. So, I mean, the, the whole process is, is one where you know what you want. You've done your research and you've compared shopping. Now, like I said, if you go to Chrono 24, you can look around and see all kinds of things, but that's not the only place you should go. There are tons of online shops and stuff. Uh, one of my favorite is uh, Shopworn. And if you go to Shopworn, it's one that they'll get the um, watches from stores that can't sell them, and they'll sell them at a big discount. Another one is Joma Shop. Uh, there's tons of them out there. Believe me, <laughs> you can you can find them all over the place. Now, a lot of them will advertise originally on Chrono 24, especially if they're having trouble moving a watch. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. Now, once you go to a place, let's say you go to one of the discount places like Shopworn or like uh, Joma Shop. Now, here a lot of people say, well, I better not... Uh, you know, here they are. They're way lower than the uh, the MSRP, and they're you know. So I'm not going to negotiate. I'm not even try, try. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You can just what's the worst they can say is no. That's it. <laughs> you know. Now some of these places um, will have these special sales, fifteen percent off everything. 
use those. Usually they don't give you a discount when they do that, but you're getting, you know, if you're talking about, let's say a $10,000 watch, a 15% discount is $1,500, <laughs> which is like, it's a lot of money. A $5,000 watch is what, $7,500 or uh, $750. Whatever it is, when there's a big discount like that, you can save a lot of money. I've saved thousands doing that. Um, patience. Man, if you're not patient, you're going to pay too much. Impatient buyers, if you see something, don't. This is, this is something to remember as a watch buyer. The last best deal has not yet been made. Okay, a lot of watch buyers say, oh, if I don't get it, it's such a good deal. I have to get it now. It's not exactly what I want, but I still, I, it's such a good buy. I want to get it. I would advise against that because if you end up with a watch you don't love, you know, you try to sell it. And maybe you don't get very much for it. I, you know, you, so buy, know what you want and find out about it first and then shop around. All right. Okay. Well, this is the first of my, or actually, well, it should be my second. The first will be what I'm going to do later, and that's on doing your watch research. So this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection, and this is the survival guide for beginning watch collectors.